kind of dig back into here. Now the fueling AFR learning, we have a disable AF learning in open loop. We want to make sure that this is set to disable. We do not want the air fuel learning to populate into our wide open throttle tuning. It'll make the wide open throttle tuning unpredictable in terms of air fuel consistency, something we want to avoid. Now one thing I want to point out here is that uh, we don't have this option in a stock Subaru ROM file. We have to go about calibrating that in a different manner. We've talked about that in the, in the main training course. If we go down here into the limits, this is how much the air fuel learning can trim itself. So we have uh, plus or minus 15%. In this case, we'll leave that alone. Well, that's gonna be the learning. The map ranges here, we can see that we have an A, B, C, D. This is gonna be the different ranges in terms of map pressure of how it applies the learning A, B, C, and D. Now D should never populate. We wanna see that that does not populate. But the A, B, and C we use for idle cruise and then higher load cruise. D could populate into full throttle. And again, we want to avoid that. What I like to do here is go to edit, go to edit map definition, go into the elements and change this to four. If I click apply, click okay. That allows us to see this XXX. This will represent then the minimum range D. This would be the maximum range D. So we see there's a max range C, min range D, and then we have XXX. That's going to be the max range D. What we want to do is set this uh, one tenth lower than this value here. This means that it can never populate. Now, even though we have here this disable AFR learning in open loop, I like to do this, this trick here. You have to do it in the stock ROM file either way uh, to be able to avoid learning D going in and start to populate into wide open throttle because it can affect a fuel delivery. So what I'm gonna do here is just copy this value, paste it here, and I'm gonna do my minus button. We'll do one. So we can see 14.43. By doing this, this says, in, in the way this logic would work, at above 14.5, it'll start to populate range D. But if it hits 14.43, that's the max for range D. So essentially it never allows it to learn into range D. Range D, which we talked about in the main training course, can affect wide open throttle. We wanna see that it doesn't. This ensures it doesn't, even though we have the disable uh, AFR and open loop checked on here in the, in the Carberry ROM. So this is a step you have to take in the stock Subaru ROM. This is optional in the Carberry, but I do it anyway to avoid any issues. Let's go ahead and close that out and minimize this. Now the next thing we need to do here is go into our MAF speed density blending. If we go to speed uh, SD, speed density, MAF, blend mode, we can find right now it's currently set to mass airflow. What this means is that the air mass determination is gonna come from the MAF sensor. Now, this particular car, I have the stock MAP sensor and I have the stock MAF sensor installed in a stock equivalent MAF diameter housing. So we'll find, in this case, we can run it on mass airflow, we can run it in speed density, or we could do a hybrid combination between mass airflow and speed density. The Carberry ROM gives you the ability to do all of this. What we're gonna do here is actually start off and leave it into the mass airflow mode because we're gonna do the calibration process and get everything scaled out per the injector size and the injector latency based on using the MAF scaling because we know we can trust it because it hasn't been uh, changed out and we know that the housing size is gonna be correct. So all of the air mass determination will be valid and solid to begin with. So we're gonna start off in mass airflow mode. We'll take a look at doing the calibration process in the next video, um, working with math and speed density for the actual fuel tuning. We're gonna make sure that both of these are calibrated. We're gonna switch back and forth and look at the determination of how to know what operation mode we're in. But for right now, we're gonna keep it in mass airflow mode. There's gonna be a blending ratio the blending ratio here is set to currently 50-50. This is only pertinent if you're dealing with your speed density math blend mode in the actual blend option here. So if we look, we have SD math blend or we have straight speed density. So in mass airflow or speed density, this table isn't applicable. If we're dealing with the mass, or going back in here, SD math blend, this table is now going to be a split. It's gonna be a ratio split between how it calculates and determine what the airflow is going to be. Now. This is currently set to 50-50 in this default mode. Usually I set this to 100 and zero. That means when we're going to be at 100% in the table here, it means we're at full speed density. If we set it in the blend mode, zero means we're at full mass airflow. And we can go a blend in between those and taper it how we'd like. We'll talk about that and get into it in separate uh, tutorials. So let's go back and just set this to uh, mass airflow just to simplify the process to get things going. Uh, if we look at engine smoothing, we find here there's gonna be a smoothing factor. This is when we're in our math SD blend ratio mode. This doesn't pertain to mass airflow only or when we're in speed density. So we don't need to necessarily do anything with this. There's a smoothing factor maximum that specifies the maximum factor it's able to smooth at. We don't need to do anything in there for at the moment. Looking in our engine displacement, 
this needs to be set correctly. I'm on the EJ20 engine, so this is approximate engine displacement, so we'll keep that there. Volumetric efficiency, this is for our speed density tuning. We do not need to worry about this at the moment. We'll deal with this when we start to calibrate and tune in our speed density section for the fuel tuning, but we're gonna be dealing with mass airflow first. That's gonna allow us to, again, figure out our injector details, the, scale, the true scaling ratio for the actual flow rate and the true latency data when we're dealing with this. And once we scale that out and get that set in mass airflow mode, we can carry that forward and then any changes we're finding and discrepancies in the estimated airflow coming from the VE table, we can deal with that calibration process at the time. We know our injector data is valid. So, uh, Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.